And, and what I remember most about that contest is my mom showed up and I don't think she had ever seen me surf before. Can you believe it? And so wow. she was there and she was sitting under this like umbrella and she saw me walk by and she was looking at the waves and they had just called my name to check in for my heat. And she looked at me and she said, in the most horrible voice, you come right back here right now. You're not paddling out there. You're going to drown. You know, like a mom. It's like in front of like hundreds of people on the beach. She grabbed the back of my jersey. That's right. I had it no on because she way. grabbed the back and, you know, it was stretchy. You know, it was a yellow jersey. And I was like, let go, you know, and I went over to the... Uh, completely humiliated and not focused on surfing. And I went over to the contestants only area and I pretended like I didn't know her. Oh, sorry, mom. She's not with us any longer, but you know, I just couldn't handle it. Moms, you know? gotta love them, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Let me, let me ask you, what do you think Fred Hemming's intention was in inviting the women to compete with the men? Was it altruistic? Was he trying to be like, yeah, you guys can compete with us? Or was he trying to be more, uh, mis I don't want to call him misogynistic, but being more like, yeah, let's see how you do up against the guys. You want to compete here, you got to compete against the guys type of attitude. Because I, I, I always have mixed feelings about Fred Hemmings, to be honest, like, I, I'm very have a lot of respect for what he did, but also, I think his views sometimes I'm not always on board with. So Fred is like to me like an annoying older brother whom I love dearly. <laughs> uh, you know, like he always wants to stick my pigtails in the inkwell. You know what I mean? He always wants to challenge me, but I tell him, Fred, don't go there. You know, I've gone to law school now. I teach gender and law. <laughs> You know, but we, every conversation starts out with us, you know, it's and, and rant with Randy Rarick in the middle going, are you two done yet? So we can get some work done. I mean, this is our dynamic and always will be. So at the time, I mean, you'd have to ask Fred, but at the time he'll tell you, I think he was being, you know, uh, um, opportunistic in the sense that, I mean, that was a media grabber, right? Billie right. Jean King. And he used mm. to say to us all the time, you want to be equal, equal, paddle out in that. And he mm. still thinks that. And so we just said, okay, bring it on. But, Did, you know. <laughs> was he the one that tried to get candy pants to sponsor you guys? <laughs> no, no, that wasn't Fred. You know, that's when we had the expression session, when we were trying to get money to go on the South Africa tour in Brazil and, and, you know, the whole first world tour. We had no money. We, you know, our sponsors were great, but big deal. I got a free surfboards, mm -hmm. which I was grateful for. Always, yeah. always surfboards, Haleiwa and other places in other years. But um, and, you know, free wetsuits. Thank you. Thank you, O'Neill. I rode for them for a little bit. But the fact is, we we didn't have money to pay our airfare or eat, you know, those <laughs> those things that are kind of important to go on tour with. And so um we, we tried to, um, we, we did a newspaper article, you know, we, we drummed up saying we need money. And the only sponsor that responded was Candy Pants. Can you tell our listeners what Candy Pants was? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know until they contacted me. I was the Were you excited at first? Like hood. Candy Pants is our sponsor. No, <laughs> I, the name was suspicious. Edible underwear. <laughs> um, they were cinnamon flavored. They wanted us to stand Ouch. at something, some kind of little sidewalk stand in Waikiki. And we always have this joke, and to this day I remember it because we used to say it so often. What are we going to do? Excuse me, Mr. or Mrs. Waikiki visitor from Iowa. Hungry? You know, <laughs> what do we, what, you know, but we said no. And then Good. they did another article about us, about us turning down candy pants as if it was the world's funniest article, but we were like, what? Um, I think we got some money from Metropolitan Life, 10,000 for all six of us. And it was actually came, Randy Rarick would often funnel me money that he got. And I say me, I mean, oh for the women's division. Wow. Because it was so much harder for me to get sponsors than it was for him. I mean, he got all of Pan Am. He got, yeah. you know, so he would say, hey, 
you know, New York life, here's 10. Again, thank you, New York. <laughs> yes. uh, so, you know, so, there, so there's a picture of me with the then mayor of Honolulu, Rail Sun, Sally Prang, Claudia Kravitz, and, um, and Becky Benson wearing these T-shirts that say New York life. <laughs> <laughs> Still have that. So that's the only sponsor I ever remember getting in that, during that first year. The, it sounds like Randy Rarick, though, was, was quite supportive or, or, uh, of, of women's professional surfing. He sounds like the one that, that kind of in that triumphant, I guess, between you and, and uh, Fred and him, he was the one that would be the tiebreaker. And it so- sounds like he was more sympath- sympathetic to, to the cause. You know, I didn't mean to say that Fred wasn't because I'm not, not saying he wasn't. We formed, but yeah. 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 But what I, you just have to know when we formed IPS in 76, he was paying me, I was making a hundred dollars a month to run it and it was wow. coming out of his pocket. Wow. So wow. because he was trying to launch it and, 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 uh, and I know Randy got 200, but Randy had like four times the amount of surfers to manage wow. and, and the tour was twice as big. So I was okay with that. But yeah, and, and Randy was always, uh, you know, you know, even today, we st- I'll have to show you a photo that the three of us, we just, we meet for lunch all the time and then just, you know, do the same dynamics. Fred and I will argue with love <laughs> and then, um, you know, <laughs> and, you know, oh, it's, we go back, what, what is that? What is that, Tyler? 76, 45 years? 76, about 40, yeah, about 45 years almost. 46. Yeah. 46. 40, yeah. Forty something more, forty five years, yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Forty six. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then I guess like how did so you had the who the women's hooey, and then did you get wind that that Fred and Randy were forming a pro tour and and did you. Or did they come to you or did you go to them? Because uh, there was also like that first pro event where it's equal prize money. And then it changed after that, correct? Well, I don't know. But here's what happened um, yeah. is that the, the Hawaii Women's Surfing, who, you know, at the time, Fred was, would, you know, he had been inviting just one surfer who had been in Playboy magazine to the Smirnoff, <laughs> just one. And she was a good <laughs> surfer and I like her. At Laura yeah. Blair's Ching, but oh, you know the Hui yeah. was going, "Hey, hello," you know, <laughs> and so uh, they said, "Okay, we need someone to go talk to Fred." You know, we have to fix these this invitation thing, and this was like seventy three, I think, and wow. so it was three years before the tour, and somehow it was me. You know, it's one of those things where sometimes I'll go, "Come on, men, follow me," and then you turn around and you're there's no one there. <laughs> so. There I was. I was like, I was 19, maybe, I don't know, 20, meeting Fred at the Outrigger Canoe Club for lunch at his invitation. Because when I called him, he said, who are you? And what do you think? uh, It was the first thing out of his mouth I'll never forget. Who do you think you are telling me how to run my contests? (laughs) I said, well, I'm from the Hawaii Women's Serving. Um, And so he let me put, because I was, my title was pro competition director after that of the Hui. Yeah. So um, he let me put on like the first quali- qualifying contest for women because we said we don't we need a system for inviting the women. And so did the men, actually, because Randy will even say it was a lot of it was word of mouth or, oh, he won this contest. Let's invite him. And it's who you knew, so, basically. Yeah. And so at that point, we sort of made this informal structure like, OK, he said, you know, your top three finishers can be in my contest. You know, because he put on, it was his, they were his yeah. contests. And so I worked with them for a few years. So in 76, when he, you know, was thinking, okay, IPS, he asked Randy to run the men's division. And then he asked me to run the women's because we already had been working together. Wow. And, so and he, I have to crack up. Yeah. I was going to say, so he, when he formed the IPS, it was to include women too. That was kind of the idea. Yes. It was not just to be men's and that was it which is right. which is amazing I, I think that's really cool because i i never I, ne- I never knew that i never knew exactly how it formed in that sense and i had always been under the impression that 
he was pre- had to be pressured to allow women. And that's really cool to, to know that it wasn't that case. It was more, we're going to do a pro tour of men and women. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's funny because we all start at the same time, you know, but if, but if you look at all of the, I mean, just look it up on Wikipedia, look anywhere, you know, not that that's the ultimate source, but in the history of surfing, <laughs> you'll say the pro tour started by Fred Hemmings and Randy Rarick. Yeah. And it's like, hey, hello, over I here, know. you know, <laughs> there were women. But um, even, you know, when the WSL, <clears throat> they did their Founders Cup a few years ago. Yeah. And they put a plaque and it said the founders of pro surfing. They didn't say the founders of men's pro surfing. No. They said, that, and they named like maybe eight men. They named Fred and Randy and Ian, and then the rest weren't necessarily founders. They were just former world champions, not just, wow. but okay. But there, and I was saying hello, you know, um, and uh, one crazy. of the uh, one of the uh, former world champions uh, that was in that group said, "Well, Patty, you weren't part of that because you weren't at our meetings. We knew you weren't there at the beginning because you weren't at our meetings." And my response to him was, "Well, you know what? You weren't at my meetings. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's how I felt about that." And to this day, it's like. I don't want to go to the surf ranch. I don't want to look yeah. at that plaque. And then a few years later, they put wonderful Debbie Beecham in because she picked up the tour in 82 and re- yeah. regenerated it. Love her. And Lynn, who's a close friend, Lynn Boyer, um, she was the world champion. But yeah. it's like the history books just forget the women. And I don't know why. It's, I know it's, why, because I know who wrote the history back then, and it sort of perpetuates itself. But they have to it's, fix it. I mean, now I feel like I'm teaching in my gender in law class. Sorry. Go oh, ahead. keep going. I'm I'm listening. I because <laughs> to me, as someone who who is a, a student of surf history, who who I love it, you know. But over the last few years, I've I've been learning more and more and realizing like how much is missing, and particularly women's surf history. It was. You know, it's all left out. The magazines didn't write about it, didn't cover it. The photographers were told by the editors not to shoot women. Uh, and then some of the photographers were, were kind of jerks to women, Dan Merkel. Um, you know, and, <laughs> you know. And, Every time and he it, saw me, he'd say, have you learned to stand up yet? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, what? You know? <laughs> you know, it wasn't properly documented. And it's such a shame because to me... I find it more interesting than than the men, you know, like you hear the sob story of, you know, I mean, we we talked about this with Sandy, but it's like you hear the sob story of Rabbit, you know, and, you know, and you're like, yeah, well, that's uh, that's harsh. But then it's like, God, the women had it so much harder and more difficult. And their story is far more interesting to me. There's so many more obstacles. And then many of you had to leave surfing you know, uh, professional surfing, you know, because it wasn't paying, it wasn't lucrative. And so you had to broaden your horizons outside of the surfing sphere, which to me is actually much more, uh, I think, honorable, not honorable, I don't want to say that, but it's, it's, it's more enlightening, I think, because you start to see there's a bigger world outside of surfing. And many of them just kept stayed in the cocoon of surfing. Yeah. You know, when I ran the tour in 77, I was so poor, Tyler, that I didn't figure out until maybe three or four days before we were starting the tour, leaving for Australia, that I had, I couldn't afford to go. And I had to go to, I had, I had arranged everything. I had done everything. So I went to Randy and I said, Randy, can you just record the, the standings for me? Can you record who got what place? And then I'll, I'll take it from there when you get home. I mean, I just remember the night they left. I was just in oh, tears and drinking. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and they were at the airport. They were taking a red eye, you know, and I was just like, this is so unbelievable. You know, I was I was working, you know, a job as a waitress and I and I was a waiter and, you know, whatever food server. And uh, we called my called them waitresses then uh, food server and then making my hundred dollars a month. And surfing and couldn't afford it. But but then you're talking about how we were treated. I mean, on that first tour in 76, yeah. oh, my God, the stuff they did to us, the, the, the sponsors and all, you know. 
what will go on.